Hey everyone, this is Austin from the Nerf High Court. So today I'm going to be doing my 300 subscriber special. So before we begin, um, first of all, thank you guys for getting me to 300 subscribers. It feels like we just got 200 and I'm already at 300, like, that's pretty cool. So thank you guys so much uh, for getting me to 300 subscribers. Uh, there is a channel by the name of The Infographics Show. And, you know, they're a pretty well-known channel. They're known for their informational videos and the animations that go with them and whatnot. Um, but they released a nerf video, which is cool, but it's very misinformational. It's titled, How Nerf Guns Work, and it kind of starts off with, like, some history about nerf and whatnot, and also goes into, like, how how nerf blasters work, uh, like the title suggests. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty misinformational. There's a lot of, uh, wrong information here. So, this video isn't really meant to, like, hate on the infographic show. I'm not trying to be like, oh, you know, infographic show sucks or anything, you know. I'm just trying to kind of correct some information, and really this video is meant for educational purposes, not really just to hate on them. Um, I do like their channel. I think it's a pretty good channel, but this one particular video, not so great. And, um, yeah, we're gonna be explaining why. I have not watched very much of it. I've only seen, like, uh, like the first couple minutes or so, but, in fact, not even the first couple minutes, like, probably the first minute of it. I really have not seen a lot, and the, uh, the reason I haven't watched a lot is to kind of keep the surprise, I guess, but I do know, um, a little bit about the video and just that there's a lot of misinformation in it. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be uh, reacting to this video. So let's go. From quietly stalking a foe waiting for the perfect moment to pull the trigger and deliver the winning shot that will take out the enemy to expertly dodging and weaving through the battlefield while avoiding enemy fire to launching a devious sneak attack on an unsuspecting victim. Who doesn't love a good nerf battle? The Nerf gun is an ubiquitous toy beloved by children and adults alike, but how does a Nerf gun work? Nerf guns, or Nerf blasters as their creator, the toy company Hasbro, prefers to call them, are an incredibly popular toy that have been around since the early 90s. The first Nerf gun introduced in 1991 was the Nerf Blaster Ball in the Aerostorm, a toy revolver that shot Nerf's now famous foam dart. All right, so starting off, we already have an error. Um, they said that the first Nerf blaster was the Blaster Ball and their Aerostorm. Not sure why they included their Aerostorm because they're saying that that's the first Nerf blaster, as in a singular blaster. So really not sure why they included the Aerostorm, and that's not even like that was in 1993. But they said that it released in 1991, which is not true. The Nerf Blaster Ball released in 1989, not 1991. Also, I think it's rather strange because in the description, uh, I think they said something like uh, Nerf guns have been a popular like Christmas and birthday gift since 1969, which isn't true. Uh, there was the Nerf ball, right? The Nerf foam ball that was released in 1969, but that's not a blaster. The first blaster was in 1989. This thing right here, the blaster ball. So it's just silly to me because it's like they said two different things. Neither one is right, and it's just... I don't know, just kind of weird, but uh, let's continue on. Today, there are more than 21 different lines of Nerf guns and dozens and dozens of different models of guns, and that's not even counting the many discontinued lines from the years past. Add in a plethora of accessories like scopes and sights, dart holders, even cameras, plus crossovers with other popular brands like Marvel, Star Wars, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Fortnite, and Halo, and it's easy to see why Nerf guns remain one of the most popular toys on the market. Most modern Nerf guns shoot the same standard foam darts as the 90s models, and can reach speeds of around 30 miles an hour. So here they use miles per hour, which I think is rather bizarre, because of course in the Nerf community we use feet per second, so no idea why they would use miles per hour. Um, I just feel like that's such a weird like unit of measure to be using. Um, but yeah, just really weird, I guess. But many of the more advanced models have come a long, long way from the days of the Aerostorm. The Hailfire comes with eight magazines that hold 18 darts each and can shoot all 144 of its darts in just 30 seconds at amazing speeds of 50 miles per hour. So here they're saying that the Nerf Hailfire had eight 18 round magazines, which is not true. It only came with four six round magazines. So it's just those kind of mistakes in this video that are just really cringy. They're also using the miles per hour again, which is just such a weird unit of measure to be using. 
The Rival series, designed for older kids and grown-up kids at heart, can shoot darts at a staggering 75 miles per hour. Some of the most advanced Nerf guns don't come cheap. The N-Strike series Vulcan and Longstrike models retail for more than $500 each, and they have a range of more than 35 feet. $500. That is definitely the retail price of the Longstrike and Vulcan. I'm going to assume that the reason that they put such expensive prices in this video is because maybe they were going off some listings that were like in-box versions or something, which is ridiculous because the Launch Strike and the Vulcan are discontinued blasters. Why would they go off of in-box things? Like, of course they're going to be super expensive because they're not made anymore. And I feel like even in-box ones wouldn't go for that much. This might just be like some overpriced Amazon listing that they went off of or something i don't know and and why why specifically the vulcan and the lawn strike it just seems weird to me that they use those two it's not just the guns themselves that have evolved over time nerf darts have come a long way since the 90s too while the traditional three inch long foam darts are still in use there are now also larger mega darts and darts with specialized tips like suction cups or velcro tips you can get glow-in-the-dark darts, whistler darts that make noise when fired, or even message darts that come with a special pen and decoder. And with the rise of more high-powered models, there are also elite darts, which are shorter and shoot faster, and high-impact rounds, which are small foam balls. Hasbro produces more than 450,000 darts each year. Since the Nerf gun was first released, that's more than 4 billion darts in total. In the last five years alone, enough darts have been produced to circle the Earth a full four times. Saying Nerf guns are popular might just be a bit of an understatement. Nerf guns have survived the test of time and proven to be one of the most enduring and popular toys for the last three decades. But these fun, simple toys actually have some powerful engineering behind them. And while the guns themselves have evolved and changed over the years, how they work really hasn't changed all that much. One of the secrets to Nerf's success is the fact that all the guns work in a remarkably similar way. Almost every one of the dozens of different models of Nerf guns available on the market today and throughout the toy's history fall into one of two categories. A Nerf gun is generally either a spring-powered gun or a pump-action gun. Spring-powered or pump-action? Pump-action is spring-powered. So why did they put spring-powered and then pump-action? That's just, like, pump-action is just spring-powered but, like, a specific type of spring-powered. It doesn't make any sense. They should have said spring powered and then flywheel powered or something. It's just silly. The now discontinued Nightfinder is a great example of a spring powered Nerf gun. The small handheld gun is a simple direct plunger mechanism on the back of the barrel to fire a single dart. In a spring powered Nerf gun, the plunger is pulled back to suck air into the plunger tub. A rubber o ring on the end of the plunger creates an airtight seal and pressurizes the air in the tube. This converts the potential energy into kinetic energy, which is stored in the gun's spring. When the trigger is pulled, the energy in the spring is released and the plunger shoots forward, giving force to the pressurized air and causing the dart to fire out of the barrel. The higher the pressure in the tube, the farther and faster the dart will travel. In contrast, the rival Twin Shock is a pump-action blaster that holds 10 mega-sized darts and fires two darts at the same time, with an impressive range of up to 85 feet. They just called the Twin Shock a rival blaster, but then proceeded to say that it has mega darts. You would think they would have maybe realized their mistake, especially through editing and stuff too. That's just, what? Twin Shock, that's a mega blaster, not a rival blaster. Knowing all about how Nerf guns work and the ways in which Nerf enthusiasts can hack these simple toys to give themselves an edge in their Nerf battles, it all begs the question, are Nerf guns actually safe? Hasbro says that they are although they prefer to call them Nerf blasters instead of Nerf guns, a term that's less scary for kids and more acceptable to their parents. I think it's funny how that's the second time that they've said that Hasbro prefers to call them blasters and not guns, yet throughout this entire video they've been referring to them as guns. And of course it's not just Hasbro that prefers to call them gun or blasters, it's the entire hobby, right? It's a, a safer term to use, not gun, because someone could potentially mistake that for a real firearm, right? So, um, again, at least they're not saying bullet. Bullet. So that is good, because that's probably, like, even worse. I'd, I'd say that bullet instead of dart is, like, even worse. But still, it's the, the incorrect terms. It's just, it just drives you crazy. Nerf guns have been around for three decades, and they probably aren't going away anytime soon. It may seem like there are cool new Nerf guns and exciting new options every time you look, 
but the engineering principles behind how a Nerf gun works have stood the test of time and have changed very little since the Nerf gun was first introduced. The next time you're facing a heated Nerf battle, you'll not only know how a Nerf gun works, but you'll also know how to give yourself an edge with Nerf hacks and custom gun mods, and you'll dominate that Nerf battlefield. Your enemies won't stand a chance against you, now that you know exactly how a Nerf gun works. If you thought this video was fun, well, that is the end of the video, so let's just kind of talk about it. Um, it seems like it actually wasn't as bad with the incorrect term usage and misinformation near the end where they were talking about how the blasters like actually work. It seems like it was the worst near the start when they were talking about like the history of Nerf. Um, they have just really were messing up a lot with that, you know. Again, like the first example was how they said that the Blast of Ball released in 1991 not 1989. This is from a channel that isn't really known for their informational videos, and yet they released this video that obviously had no research prior to it, like no good research. So obviously there was not a lot of research done in this video, and again I'm gonna repeat what I said at the start, I'm not trying to just like hate on them, I actually kind of like the infographics show uh, YouTube channel, but this video is honestly not acceptable. There's so much wrong uh, information, so much misinformation, it's just kind of ridiculous, so. But with that being said, that concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching, and see you guys later.